Friends, I'll be giving you an overview on the prevention of infection control in the intensive care unit where the critical care patients are treated mostly based on some simple premises. Preventive strategies are very important in the care of uh, critical care patients and need the uh, comparatively support of the entire team that handles such patients. As you can see, the patient in a critical care setup has got so many external devices inside him that he becomes very vulnerable and it requires the support of the entire team of people caring from him from the administrative to the nursing and the physicians to be aware of some of the basic principles that are involved in preventing any infection and as much as we can lower it. The learning objectives for this module are early recognition, isolation and reporting of infection. This is very important that you are able to detect or think of infection in certain kind of patients who are being treated for critical care. Adopt basic infection control measures that will reduce the risk and transmission of pathogens. Adopt correct techniques of hand hygiene which is the single most important factor that will prevent infection in critical care patients. Appropriate use of personal protective equipment, environment cleaning, adopt correct methods of bio-waste segregation and disposal and of course post-prophylaxis, post-exposure prophylaxis. Infection in critical care areas is seen all over the world. They exist in the developed world from 5 to 10 percent but in developing countries and in India the rates are much higher. ICU patients are vulnerable to mortality because of infections to an extent of up to 30 percent. Chain of infection. Consequences of infection due to the endogenous flora are very high. They depend on the quality of the pathogen that is available for causing infection, the virulence of the pathogen which is now seen the trend has moved towards more resistant pathogens colonizing the patient that is brought in to the intensive care units. Routes of transmission. Contact transmission is by direct or indirect contact with patients or the patient care environment and examples are shigellosis, viral hemorrhagic fever are to name a few. Aerosol transmission is inhalation of infectious particles or droplets in the air. Droplet infection are by large droplets generated by coughing, sneezing, H1N1, Neisseria meningitidis, pertussis are clear examples of such in spread uh, infection where the particles are large and they do not travel more than one meter away from the patient's site. Yep.